Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Music Talks Podcast. I am still your host, Bobby Rose, and with me I still have my very good friend, Chang Long. And we're continuing our discussion of music research. So if you actually caught the episode last week, we were talking about the different terminologies and topics that exist within the field of music research. And in this week, we're trying to we're going to go into different ways of how we actually apply these different terms in our own fields and how our own researchers actually differ from one another. Because we did talk about how last week, there are some things that overlap. And so please tune in and enjoy. All right. Thank you for having me again today. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think before we go into our topic today, let's just try to summarize what we looked into last time. So basically, last time we discussed a lot about the terminologies, uh, especially on the type of researchers mm-hmm. that are uh, related to music, and and then we did some uh, like we came up with uh, like a soft conclusion on like basically like, what we did last week. There is a hidden theme that is about like you know what is conventional. And what is not conventional, and how how do we actually consider something as conventional, something yeah. as not conventional, and is it really necessary? So yeah, and that actually uh, we we have some very uh, good answers. I I I think uh, for to to answer this question. So I hope that those of you that are watching, if you are also questioning about the same things, I hope our answers will help to inspire you and maybe if you have your own thoughts and suggestions, you can uh, send an email to, to us and then uh, yeah, we welcome for any different, uh, any new ideas for us, uh, to us. Yeah, it, it sounded like you were going for a closing on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, essentially what he says is true because you see, the idea of mu- research, not just music research, research in general, is there's never um, a closing point. There's never an ending point. Essentially, a- every research we do is always passing the baton in a running, in, in a race. So we're always uh, finding new research gaps that exist. And believe us, there's always research gaps. Even those things that we wouldn't think of, our professors wouldn't think of, because as time goes by, um, different topics, new topics, new topics of discussion, new debates will arise. And that's the beautiful thing about research in nature. That yes. It's, there's no, it's a never ending uh, discussion about it. Correct. Because uh, about this, I can totally relate to, to the past researches that, uh, like, that we have done. Usually, we thought, okay, we might kind of you know, hypothesize the kind of end result that we are going to get. But as we go on, we might stumble across some other things that we never imagined that we would encounter. And then it's all those things that we didn't uh, foresee that could make up the, the gap for a future research. research. Yes. And, and the best part about all this is that uh, the best part about this is that we can actually collate all the different um, materials from, from not only the scholarly side. Yes, uh, you know, when we write, we do have to put in scholarship materials, which is like written specifically for academics. You know? uh, there is actually a hierarchy of evidence that exists, starting with. Um, randomized control trials and so on. And the last one is always blog posts or articles. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. And that, that's, that's why we actually love uh, going around, talking to people and trying to find out. Because it, essentially, in a way, what do you think? So it, it, it serves as a form of literature review. That's correct. In, in different sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and about, this is something about to do with the discourse. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, we are talking about the same matter, but it's because of this discourse, we all uh, subject into the matter, and then we add, in, add on to the discourse itself. And this thing that we are talking about will have uh, it give it think this matter more uh, like 
you know, much, it becomes something more meaningful than yeah. the original turns out to be. Yeah. So, uh, for something that came out with a very direct intention in mind, slowly, because people start to, okay, let's, let, uh, let's look at some things that are quite relatable. Uh, let's say the phenomena of uh, gang, uh, Gangnam Style, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's just one of the many uh, K-pop songs that we listen to it. But because it got so popular, different people, they came up with uh, different views on that song. Some people even go and go into it and uh, start doing researches on why did it uh, become so popular and or it, it be, it's because the BPM of this song, BPM means uh, beats per minute, like its BPM matches with our heartbeat mm -hmm. rate. Uh, so that's why we, we can like, you know, uh, jam into into the, the song and we can feel it very much. Yeah, so it vibes it as Yeah, exactly. So it's because of this uh, different views from different angles, it gives this song this song essentially became a phenomena as a whole. So it's all because of this whole thing. This song is no longer how it is it used to be anymore. It used to be just a song. Like it's it's a very generic uh, K-pop song, but it's because of this whole phenomena. It represents like there was this peak of uh, K-pop. Uh, era where everyone just uh, you can't you, you couldn't find anyone uh, you can hardly find anyone who doesn't know about Gangnam Style yeah. so it's this discourse that is like you know uh, that that makes something so much more meaningful yeah. Yeah. which actually brings us to the first question of the day like um, that's a very good uh, example of Gangnam Style let's say um, you know, going back to what we were talking about last week, how you and I, we have our own different fields, as in a different um, methodology of research, I guess. Uh, you look at it more of a, into any kind of music, into more of a ethnomusicological aspect, and I look at it from a psychological aspect. So, just to, you know, play devil's advocate, is it actually possible for somebody to just go around and ask and look into different materials and, you know, their own literature review per se, either hard copy or soft copy online, whatever. and use those same amounts of data, use those same materials that they found, but write it in different ways. Because I was thinking like, technically, every kind of comment that people give, every kind of writing that people do, it will still fit in my method of writing and your method of writing, your, your the ethnomusicological yeah. side, the psychological side. As long as we know how to relate it to our fields, is that true? Mm -hmm. Actually, this brings back to what uh, Doctor Chan Chong Jan uh, from UPM said that the reason why literature review is so important is because it's all it's because of the keywords. Like when we read, uh, uh, like let's say uh, literature for like you know to, to get some inspirations it's all the keywords and like you know uh yeah the, the reason why literature review is so important is also because like when when you are reading someone's literature review you can like when when you are trying to look for an idea it literally literally can can help you to you know find something that uh that might be useful for you. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I, I think we have that experience before. Yes. So, so uh, yes, to answer to your question, I, I do think that there are like literature reviews that could uh, fit for, for different, uh, different fields of study. Mm -hmm. Actually, it, it boils down to how we want to use the, the materials and the, the uh, literature that, that we want mm. and uh, sometimes it's it's uh, it's about how 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 you you 
can you are able to use it for for yourself. Yeah, yeah. It depends on how you frame it in a yes. certain way. Yeah. But uh, we we are not trying to say that oh we 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 try uh our ways to do like you know go 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 our our uh how to say uh we go and force and the, you know mold it oh. so that it fits for us. It, it it's not like this, but it it's more like because uh most of the time when we are talking about something, you have to you need to provide the context, and it's I think in in my opinion. It's the context that will give out opportunities for you know uh, usage of different fields, yeah. and it's it's this context uh, that that is provided by uh, uh, an order of uh, like let's say a research that can give people some uh, opportunities or like realizations that oh. This can be helpful, or this can be something I can do a research on. Yeah. And uh, just two things on, on on my side. First thing is about literature, right? Just specifically the academic literature review, uh, or actually any kind of literature review. You can never expect like um, I just immediately come in halfway and then just expect. Or oh, you know uh, what actually Justin said, and then yeah. I made that theory, and then I just expect you to know. That's the idea of. Literature review to actually help the readers meet meet the readers halfway. Okay, so just bring them up to speed of what's been happening, and then you go into your topic. And the the best thing about these kind of things, like for me personally, what I experience is sometimes there are some things that um the my pie of life I call it a third, a third, a third. One third is things I know, one third is things I don't know, and one third I think I don't know I don't know. Uh, I didn't even know that I didn't yes, know this. Yes, and then I will find and it's like oh. This might be another way that we can. Yes, correct. Yeah, but going upon what you said, technically, in that sense, any topic fits into any field, right? Like you can talk about Ghanaian stuff in an ethnomusicological aspect, psychological aspect, musicology aspect, historian aspect. You can talk about Mozart the same goes for different. You can talk about, um, you know, Beyonce and Michael Jackson and even Sidney Lumet. So, if that's the case, then what are we actually? What actually differentiates between one field from another? Uh, I mean, like, it, it it was the priority that we we're talking about. But is there uh like specific rules that for ethno music ethno musicology, uh, you have to have ten specific terms of your own, and or I have to have ten specific psychology terms. Because somebody might just open up one to trouble I had with your dissertation is that I just open it up and I just wanted to pinpoint one specific field and then I just couldn't because your dissertation went about uh, three different fields. Yeah. So it's like you know that's the so essentially does is any topic fitting for any kind of field? I think it all comes down to like I said. It's the context of it. Like, it's about the angle, the angle that you are you are trying to look into it. Ah, uh, again, I take out the. Uh, I'll use the example of uh, Gangnam Style. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like like we said, it's it can be used for like you know you can do research on this thing. Uh, coming from like like. Uh, about different uh, fields, but why is it? Why is this happening, and how can this happen? Is because uh, it, it it all depends on the the angle that you are you are trying to cut into. Because when you are specific into one particular angle, it it it's go uh it's going to be like you know this this song is just the subject of your research topic. But then the the uh, like you you're subjecting into this matter in order to to look into the uh, you know the the like let's say if you want to look at the psychological part of uh, this particular song, you have to subject into that song the subject into that situation. Mm -hmm. Then you look into the psychological uh, perspective. Uh, that aspect aspect of 
the 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 uh the whole thing. So I think it's the the angle that you need to be very specific about because if you if you do it in a very general way and like you are you are or trying to talk about the uh, psychology uh, the psychological aspect of, of it but you also like you know throw in like you also kind of related to to uh like sociology and yeah it, it will it will become quite uh ambiguous like mm -hmm. you said like maybe it, it was my my mistake in, in like the, some something I, I didn't manage too well in my uh, dissertation is that uh yeah, it, it can be looked into uh, different fields. Like you, you can, depending on which part you read, sometimes you feel like oh, it's it's more towards a ethnomusicological uh, perspective, but sometimes it's more towards a sociological uh, aspect of things. So um, I think it, it's it all boils down to the angle, and you have to like really lock into that angle. And, and work on it, but the the sorry <laughs> no it's okay the, uh, the important part is for you to really subject into the ma matter. Mm. That is that is the essential thing that could, uh, you know, put you into that situation and look through the glasses of, uh, which is this song, mm -hmm. and see into the the, the things like into the, the aspects that you want to look into. Yeah. The, the, sorry, I, I didn't want to interject. It's just, I just wanted to mention, I don't think you made a, I mean, like maybe you feel like you made a mistake in how you wrote, but I was just thinking like, maybe another perspective to, to look at it from is, there is no really, that's not really a necessity to, you know, uh, objectively state that, okay, I'm going to write down an ethnomusicological research. You know? If your research, talks about Gangnam style, then your research talks about Gangnam style. Yeah. If you happen to, because we did talk about how different research um, overlaps, right? different field overlaps. So if you just happen to state, maybe in the passing, or maybe it takes a bit more substance than you planned it to, that you just tap into the sociological side, or even the philosophy side. I, I don't think it's a big problem. But relating to what you said, so essentially what takes precedence is the research topic at hand, yes. not your field. So you could have grown up to be, uh, you know, you could have done your undergraduate and your postgraduate in, uh, for example, in musicology, but then you just want to answer a, a, a question about music that is felt or perceived by people, which is essentially the uh, music psychology. Yeah. But it's not really a problem that, okay, now I have to shift my own mindset. It's the topic that you want to talk about. First yes, it's the topic. It's the topic. Yeah. Actually, you brought up about something which uh, I can also, like, I can relate this into our first question, which is, like, yeah, when, when, when you say that you tap into the keywords and then you can, f you, you are able to, like, you feel that, okay, sometimes it's like, it's a ethnomusicological aspect of it, sometimes it's, more of a sociological aspect of it. What I can think of is that it also creates the opportunity for this, uh, like what we said earlier. We can look more into this research and then these are the gaps that mm -hmm. could create the opportunity for our future researches. Yeah. yeah so th uh, like yeah, after you, you put on that, I just have this thought that yeah, it's it's also this this times like this moments like this that creates the new opportunity for us to you know look into oh maybe we haven't been looking too much about like you know uh, we have like maybe our intention uh, aspect. In mind is to look into the ethnomusicological side of, uh, let's say, one song, but uh, maybe uh, you know, sub, uh, not subconsciously, it's like, but you just so happen to have created another discussion about the sociological side mm -hmm. of the, the the topic. So 
this time, okay, now that you have your mind set to do the ethnomusicological side of it, so maybe next time you also you can take this gap and do the more sociological side of this uh, same topic. Yeah, and in that sense, you you actually the your research actually triggers the multidisciplinary. Uh, aspect of research, not that you intentionally go out and claim that, uh, and state that you know I have to work with people of different fields, yes. but you are intentionally. Yeah, that's very true. And then in uh for me, actually doing a research is also a way of like you know making a discussion about a matter. Mm -hmm. So there is no uh end like uh, a very um, absolute, you know, correct answer to any discussion. The only reason why a discussion, like, oh, okay, we, we think that something is correct, something is not correct, is because the majority of, like, you know, the the, the, the majority of the answer is uh, pointing to, towards yes. But as time goes, this discu very same discussion can be brought out like it's just like a matter of perfect uh, consecutive fifth. Yeah. Parallel. Yeah, parallel fifth in 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 the classical music theory. Yeah. Back then, it used to be something that is like against the rule. But right now, in in jazz, it's a different thing. It's it can be done. It's just a, it's it's a matter of like you know the the uh, timeline. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. So from time to time. Discussions has to be made, and the uh, you you find that the same question can be answered with different answers as as uh, as time goes. That's totally true, and um, I I don't want to speak against the you know <laughs> those classical terms, but uh, talking about what you were talking about last week, uh, there was that research that they were talking about popular songs, yes. and then after ten years they were talking about. Yeah. Um, it, it's essentially the same thing that you were, you were saying like you could be looking at it from a popular I, I guess a sociological aspect of popular music but that's why I asked you is it the same people or is it the same aspect yeah, yeah, yeah. on longitude because in my head maybe they have matured maybe they have developed so cognitive development that's what that's my job uh. that's what I'm looking at. That's so essentially what, you, what we're both saying is like because we have been nurtured in a, in a way according to it doesn't matter our upbringing our you know what we consume through our lives and especially our learning institutes and our supervisors essentially there is no wrong way to write it it's just that after a few years you take a step back and look, read it again or even after a few months you take a step back you read it again oh i actually tap into the field of psychology for me yeah and, yeah it's fine so now that we already covered all these different questions, let's actually try to distinctively um, differentiate what is di uh, you know differing between our research. So we already talked about how multidisciplinary uh, fields, there are a lot of things overlapping, but there are certain things that just doesn't overlap. Yeah. Okay. And one of those things is um, observational research versus uh, actual research. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, uh, a short story. Very recently I realized, uh, and I, I talked to Chan Long about this, is that um, I have a tendency to look into ethnomusicological research and ask, what if we change that? What if we change this? And then, you know, I, was, uh, I actually discussed this with the professor and he was like, oh, that's very interesting. And then nothing more. Because he is a ethnographical, ethnomusicological lecture, and he specifically does a lot of research about observational research. He does a lot of the observational me me methodological research, whereby he sit, sits, I mean, metaphorically, they sit in the corner, take down notes, oh, that's very interesting. But from how I was nurtured in my research, I would take a step back, note down what they do. Okay, let's, let me try and implement an intervention let me try and implement a change. Let me try and do this and whatever the triggers, that will be my, for better or for worse, negative or positive reaction, I'll just write that down. 
but I still implement something. That's the action. Would you say so? That? Okay. Yeah, that. actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, in in my own terms, I would say this in a in a way that uh, your kind of research is the kind of research who to to give answers. But then the observational research is more towards explaining mm. why is this uh, uh, like uh, the, the whole thing like why is this question being asked and why is this answer being answered mm. so so basically it's it's a it's a very uh, different approach like it's, it's a very different approach in the the way we uh, see the same question like the, the way you try to look for answers and the type of answers that you are looking for essentially it's, it's quite different although we are uh, like trying to uh, what inspired us to, to do the research might be based on the, the same question but the way we approach is uh, it's very different I would say yeah see the reason I have to bring this up is that last week you did mention about the scientific side yeah researchers so I, I always think like the scientific side is always when you you know uh, manipulate a variable this dependent variable and then you trigger a responding variable so there's a scientific experiment and you collect the empirical data it has to be statistically measured or whatever either qualitatively or quantitatively i mean maybe qualitatively it's more vague it's more uh, personally written it's more a single perspective written but there is still some form of data collected. So I would think, would would you think that there's someone out there that might think the action research method in music research, music field specifically, it's more scientific than observational research because technically you're not testing against anything. Observational research. Actually, I think the this this is one of the main issues of of ethnomusicology uh, research. Uh, researchers, which is like, I think most part, what most uh, ethnomusicological researchers do is answering and also making a fact. You know, it it it, it, will, it only stop at stating out the fact. Mm -hmm. It is like, yeah. So this happens. This happens, and then. Your way to 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 like answer is like what exactly happened? What exactly happened? And and then for back to uh, observational researchers, it's like explaining. Okay, there are like okay. This actually I, I brought up this this example just now. It's like it's it's about the how you use the data. We we have we might have the the same set of data, but maybe for for your. Uh, for your approach, huh? you will deal more with okay. So, how many percent of people think of it like this? How many percent of people think of it the other way around? But the way observational research, it's like it, it uh, as the name states itself, it's to observe the whole thing and then take it. Uh, uh, we will take it as a whole and then we we will say that the. Uh, the emphasis is not on the the numbers, it's yeah. on what kind of answers has been answered. Yeah. So it's yeah, that's why that's why uh but when you brought up about uh, the professor that you had this conversation mm -hmm. with yeah, actually it, it tends to be like this because it's like yeah, it's interesting that there are different views, but uh it's because it, it doesn't I think it's mainly because that uh, it, it's like it's not the numbers. It, we are we are not dealing with like you know the actual numbers mm -hmm. or like the actual changes of something. We are dealing with okay. We are still observing the whole thing, and then if something really shifts very much, then we'll come up with uh, ways to explain. Uh, like there are the you know shifts in in you know views or like changes in things, mm -hmm. yeah. So so um, the the way we approach it is slightly different, like slightly different. So your your way of 
like a approach. Essentially, is to make it. Uh, it's from an open-ended one to a closed-ended yes, one. Yes. But for observational researchers, it's often most of the time from a closed-ended one to an open-ended one. Yes. There, there are more questions are uh, being asked than answered. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Even though, like for mine, there are still new questions to be asked. But at least for what I was looking for, I answered it. Yes. yes. Right. At least for for my context in Malaysia in uh, whatever um, situation I'm in, I answered it. Yeah. And then the later ones, you guys can you know go ahead and have fun. Yeah. So the other component I wanted to ask you about is the I wanted to discuss with you about is the different populations that we work with. Which I realized that after a while of thinking about it, mulling it over, there is no such thing as general groups. You work with individual or specific groups. I work with individuals. Like okay, I carry out music therapy for my past research was with uh, clients with dementia, and then your dissertation was about people on YouTube. Yes. Technically, that's still not general people. That's still people, people on YouTube. Yeah. You um you are not putting away. You're not subtracting, but uh people who maybe adults, elders who don't use YouTube, they're not within your research. For me, it's like. General elders not within my uh, research, yeah. but at the same time, I can also do music therapy for general groups, I guess, uh, and you could also do an ethnomusicological research for the you know if we actually turn it around yeah. for elders facing dementia or whatever. So with the dementia, there's the cultural uh, music change. There's the uh, traditional music. Is there any changes in right? Yeah. Right. So so actually, it's all because uh, it all depends on the, you know, the kind of research that we are on, and as researchers, we'll try our best to have our data to be as unbiased as possible. Yeah. Because actually, like yeah, you you, you pointed out a very important thing. Like uh, for example, the the one I use uh the demographic that I use is people who use YouTube. What uh, what about those who, who don't use YouTube? Uh, actually, I have a, a, a kind of a, a counter argument to that. It's because people who use most most of the time, like the, the, the song that I'm doing about, it's because people watch YouTube and watch that song. Oh. So that's why that's why I chose that demographic mm. to, to for my for my uh, research yeah. and yeah, actually, uh, in in the the kind of uh, the type of demography that we choose for our our research, it actually depends on the kind of topic that we are trying to to uh, you know uh, lock on, because we we can't do like the patients with uh, dementia uh, dementia yeah. dementia, and then we go and do interview to people who have no idea what, what it is about. Yeah. So the, yeah, it's it's uh in, in choosing the uh like you know the people that we obtain our data from, we get our data from, this is also one of the uh, you know something that we need really need to put into consideration because uh yeah which which also brings uh some brings to something about like uh the COVID nineteen patients, like the 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 number, although the number uh -huh. of new daily infected cases has been low, but you also need to look at the bigger picture here, which is the total number of people being tested on, yeah. is also lower. So the important thing is the rate of infected cases yeah. and not the number of infected cases. If not, your number, your data will become a very biased data. Yeah. So in my very honest honest opinion, this low number of new daily infected cases is actually a, a quite a biased number, if you will. The rate of infected uh, cases is the unbiased number. Yeah. If you compare to the like yeah by by 
calculating the new number uh, over the, the number of people who, who were tested. Yeah, so it's about the, the uh, bias and unbiasedness of our data that is, uh, that is important for us for, uh, when, when we choose the groups to do our research on. I mean, just to get things clear, we're not talking bad about anyone like with the yeah. I mean, like everybody is trying their best in this specific field. It's just that it doesn't describe the whole truth. It describes yes. the a part of the truth or maybe a truth, but it's not the holistic truth. So yeah, I totally understand what you mean. Yeah. So actually, uh, the individuals or the, the like you know the, the groups of people that or the, the demography that, that we choose for our research um, usually it, it also ha have to be uh, quite targeted because uh, we, we wouldn't want our data to be you know uh, all over the place <laughs> all over the place yeah so uh, so actually I, I think that might uh, Answer to the to the question of like you know the the uh, is there any the, the specific groups or like you know general groups? It, it depends on the kind of topic. If your topic is, uh, like you know, uh, pointed again uh, on on the general public, yes, then your 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 number your data has to be on the general public. But if it's like you know, uh, the topic is on a specific group of people. Then your your data should be on a specific group of people, and then yeah, it, it all comes down to, to your considerations of the demography with uh that that comes with your topic. Okay, so that that's a very good point. Let me um change my mind on this one. Okay, you can never have general groups or, or you know like general public unless you do a global general public yes. research. Right? You yeah. can never, there will always be, okay, only in Selangor or only in KL, then you're limited to it. What about the general public in Malaysia? Then you're only Semenanjung Malaysia. What about in Malaysia, like both sides? But that's still Malaysia. So you spread it out, you spread it out, you spread it out. You can really have a non-biased, clean data yes. if it's a global citizen. Yeah. Shape, right? So I, I would say that uh, maybe it's not the, the, the main question, the main problem is not on whether it's a specific one or the general one, yeah. it's just about who you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess um, the best way to really summarize what we've been talking about the whole day, it's just get your research question right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, uh, you have to make sure that the, the, you have all the things like the, uh, the, the methods that you use and the Material. Uh, material is a very very important thing. Yeah. Because if you use the the wrong material or something that is like slightly off, it will essentially uh eventually make your that uh, you know research go into a very different way than yeah, yeah. you you uh initially wanted. Yeah. You might just distort your whole research. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Um. Yeah. So that that's a very that's a, yeah. Get your materials straight, get your me methods straight, and please, I, I guess, don't be afraid to, and don't be uh, lethargic to revise your research questions, your objectives. Maybe, okay, uh, you start off with, I want to do this for these people, for this area, in this amount of time. And then, because of a lot of things, either lockdown or you know financial problems or a lot of reasons, you have to cut down here, build more there, yeah. Uh, here, right? Yeah. I think uh, in doing researches, the very important thing to do is actually to have discussion with with, uh, with your peers. Yes. Because sometimes when you do something, you will get so into it and you forget about like you know how others will will uh, understand your your topic. Yeah. So. Having having a second or third mind and to, to look into your research is very essential to give you a better view 
on 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 the topic so that you're not only doing from your perspective you're also you're also ensuring that people who read into your research un, uh, can understand what yeah. your your topic is about yeah uh two points on that first of all listen to people talk about it and if they don't jive if they if what they comment is wrong or, or maybe not wrong but it's um not something it you want it's not something that relates to you yeah uh yeah you can just put it away and but don't ignore them just keep it at the back of your mind and also be open to taking criticism i i just found that the most important thing specifically for music research maybe it could translate over other research fields when people criticize my research i i always say thank you so much because i didn't even think about this you know yes correct but also it, it is very important to choose the correct people to ask yes yeah yeah <laughs> because you have to you have to have the different critical minds for you to to uh, to to give you more different uh, perspectives yeah on on of how how people see or how people view on your on your uh like you know the, the topic that you are talking about and the, the the things that you have prepared it's very important for for uh for you to see if the things that you have prepared are like you know suitable or not yeah sometimes when you you are very de- uh, like uh, one track minded. Well, yeah, one track minded. That okay, this must be it. Yeah. A, a, maybe a very simple question could just throw you out of uh, throw you out, and then you you all of a sudden feel, oh. Like this this happens. Th- this would be very severe, especially when you are already very far into into your research. Yeah. Then only you start to. Uh, being thrown with this very simple question, you it might change you, uh, and and also like you make your argument invalid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. And essentially, at that point, like you know, if you really you've gone down the rabbit hole and you don't want to just look at anything, else, you're not doing research anymore. Uh, yeah, I you're you're really just like blowing smoke. You're really just that that actually out. didn't uh makes you no difference from uh, fictional writer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's some merit to it. It's just um you know, think about your context. If you're writing it just to finish it off. Okay, now we're just like, <laughs> now it's like personal comments. But if you're just writing it just to finish it off, um yeah. you, you do you. <laughs> you do you, yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be surprised if like I I mean at that point, uh, I if you just want to write it to finish it off then Maybe you're not one of those people that want to get their research published, anyways. So it's it's not wrong. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's not commendable, but it's not wrong. You want to add on some final thoughts or something? Uh, I think I have already uh, said it. Like uh, to always talk about your your like discuss about your your topic. Be open about it with your peers yeah. and have discussion to to. Not only that, but you also, you should also like uh, you know uh, give your own opinion to other people's uh, you know uh, other people's topic and stuff, and then be more critical uh, on when you are lo- looking at others' topic because and don't be afraid. Yeah, don't, don't be, be afraid. afraid. That that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, if you are you are afraid that oh you might uh like you know uh your your comment might be. Might be hurtful to them, and so you decided to, to keep them to yourself. No, no, be more critical so that they can realize uh, which part that they have done wrong, and they can uh, make amends. Uh, or uh, depends on your uh, according to your critics, yeah. and it will help them a lot. It will make the research into a, a more like I said, we you do researches. Not only for yourself, it's because you are you are doing it for a, a great deal. Yeah. That you are you are contributing to the society. Mm-hmm. So your your research has to be like you know, be a the the very very general thing is that your research has to be understood.
by the general public, like uh, for not only for for researchers, mm -hmm. not only for scholars, but also people who whoever that reads uh, your your research, who reads into your topic and stuff, they need to be un able to understand why, where, what, and where you are coming from, mm -hmm. so that they can they can understand that oh, so there's this problem and yeah. Uh, this might be the way that we can solve some certain certain things and stuff, mm. or like uh, oh, that that just so happened to have uh, to be this thing that has been uh, happening, but we never never know we never knew that it's there until we read into this research. Mm. The your your ability to to convey your research that part is where the the. The discussion with peers can like play uh, like that that would play into a very important role because uh, if you don't do that, no one will actually like you know be able to answer to, to understand your your what your research is about. Yeah, and actually, Channel makes a very good point of uh, which is my concluding part that I, I wanted to put up. The more you talk to people, the more that's essentially. Uh, one of the better ways to apply it because um, you know one, one of the things I had to learn behind me is that it's not just a professor uh, found out something about you know from my personal you know history like a professor found out something about neurodiverse kids you know uh, children on autism spectrum disorder and a year later UNICEF implements it a year later the teachers magically knows it and just no it's, it's the fact that professors talk to people people talk to other people and this information gets around that's how research is applied in real world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for delving into the episode this week. If you actually missed on the episode last week, just to tie in both topics of both episodes of music research, please do check it out. If you do have any questions relating to the things that we talked about today, you can shoot us an email at aminbot13 at yahoo.com where I'll either get my friend channel on to answer in a future episode or I'll personally reply to you. Thank you so much.